Y'all know I'm spitting the truth when I be up in this room With the political, my cynical, I'm speaking to you Like you do, do, sweet point zero Underground hero with your beauty heroes They heard of me in Germany, I'm permanently embedded in this I'm minimalist, I give them a twist Was underrated, now I don't give a shit I'm on a path to my success, how about even get rid of What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Welcome back to Blue, reporting live from How to Grouse Stoke, Christmas 2017. Um, I'm sitting here with this dude right here. I, I like to call him the Jim, Jimmy Hen- Hendrix of the underground. Like, I, I just say that. That's what I say. And um, if you think he's not, you fucking wrong. And you don't know shit. And because what I say is just facts, even though we don't fact check. Name yourself. What's your name, sir? Del the Funky Homo Sapien. They call me Sir Diesel. If you know me, you call me Diesel, whatever. Funk pimping, what's happening? What's the first rap you ever wrote? Man, Plea would know that one. I get on stage, I grab a mic, and some, something like that. How old are you? Man, my first rap, well, I was probably like 12, 13, probably. I got a question. I asked that to one of your other homies, too, the same like, what's the first rap you wrote thing? I want to know like this. Was you ever whack at making raps? Yeah. I think that, that ass plus. I mean, he'll tell you. If he start rapping that rap that I'm trying to remember, you can see. Because I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Uh, what was the rapper that you looked up to the most when you came up? Karis One was one of them, definitely. Um, uh, he, he a Leo, too. Um, see, see. Mm- all the dope niggas is Leo's, by the way. It's Leo season. Q- Q-Tip was one, you know what I'm saying, later on. Jungle Brothers definitely was a big influence on me. Um, can I say later than that? Red Man, definitely one of them. How old were you when you signed your first record deal? The first one I got, I was like maybe 15, oh. 16. But I, I wasn't. But What? But I wasn't at crisscross. No, no. It, it it didn't materialize though because it was on some um it was on some you know some street level shit and something happened so it, that one never materialized. My mom didn't let me sign it for a good reason. So that one never materialized. With Cube, that happened maybe around seventeen, eighteen, something like that. I got a question. Back then, when you were seventeen, eighteen, when he says Cube, he talking about O'Shea Jackson, aka Ice Cube. Uh, what's your relation to Ice Cube? That's my mother's brother's son, so that's first first cousin. First cousin. Um, did you ever go out on tour with him? Yeah, my first tour that I went on was with him and uh, him, uh, Dub C in the Mad Circle. What's up, Dub? You know, um, and uh, uh, and Black Sheep. So that was the first tour I, I went on, and that was that was a great tour. And I got to know uh, Drez. What's up? Shout out to Drez, man. That's one of my favorite MCs. That's like my uh, one of the people I look up to, like because he's like a cool nigga on the mic. Definitely, and he and he's he a cool person in real life too, man. So, yeah, that was that was a great tour. I was on the tour bus with uh with Dub C and the Mad Circle. So we was on the tour bus with the people that was setting up the props and stuff. Oh shit! Uh, Nick, what's the craziest thing you seen on that tour? I didn't see nothing. I was <laughs> I was to the dome. You feel me? Like I was to the dome in my little cubicle or whatever, working on little electronics or something, you know, nerding out. 
So, you know, I was doing my thing. I didn't get into none of the other stuff. But you know what? I ain't seen nothing really crazy popping off. Everybody was pretty much about business. I what was uh when you start first start going to New York? Cause I I, I want to ask this of y'all back in the day, cause like um the West was only recognized for one type of music. How did they treat you when you brought your music out east? Good, actually. Like I, I, I one of the shows that I did that was important to me was at the Apollo, and I had to do the Apollo twice in one night, right? So. You rubbed the, uh, the stump. I I didn't rub the stump, but uh. Nigga, you got boo. No, no, nah, nah. I didn't get booed. I mean, uh, incredibly to me, I didn't get booed. Like, they kind of was like peeking, and they, they kind of was like, I, I like dude, he, he tight, you know what I'm saying? They wasn't like, yeah, yeah, but they didn't boo me, so that's that's a good, that's good. response. New York back in the day, you don't understand, New York niggas used to not fuck with uh, West Coast niggas as far as rap music goes. No, 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 I mean, to a degree. I, w- I wouldn't say that. It depends on who you was. Like, fools like Ice-T or King-T. They, 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 they gave it up to certain people. You know what I mean? Ice Cube, they definitely liked Ice Cube. It, if you stood out from what was just normal, you feel me? They, they, they would re- respond to that. So they, so they like Ice Cube pre-Bomb Squad? Yeah, oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You know, they fuck with Cube. Like, that was part of what was making N.W.A. move, because they was like, oh, okay, he tight. Like, But see, I was kind of the same way. I thought, like, you know, okay, West Coast, it's just all gangster shit, you know what I'm saying? And then I see somebody like uh, Deadly Threat. Shout out to Deadly Threat, man. Oh, shit. He was, oh, yeah, he one of the first dudes that I used to be around in L.A. that really was dope and, and made me start looking differently at, about it. And I was like, okay, he's dope. He's, he's street, but, like, he ain't putting so much on about he gangbang and all this. He's just being real with the whole situation. So that's kind of changing. I don't know who Deadly Threat is because niggas don't know because niggas ain't old like us. Deadly Threat is one of the dopest dudes out from the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? And um, he was down with DJ Pooh. He was down with Pooh Camp. He came out with an album called Sick in the Head back in the day that Pooh put out that I thought was really dope, but it was all Gangsta Boogie. The whole album was Gangsta Boogie, like do 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 do, like all of it. It was. He wasn't rapping the game, man. It's just that. Yeah, he he was he was just on some real stuff. You know what I mean? Like every situation he rap about would be like some real nigga shit. Real nigga shit. Speaking of real nigga shit, uh, well, uh, how'd you think of the name Hieroglyphics? I had a partner back in the day, and like he was like from London or something, so he used to be a fly dude or whatever. Kind of, kind of like snooty a little bit. You feel me? And he had the name for his crew, Hieroglyphics, and he what? was, yeah, it was his oh, name. Wait, oh. And he and he was like, man, it's, this is weak. I don't like it. And I Ooh. and I was like, man, that's clean. Can I get it then? He was like, man, go ahead. Dumbass. And that's how I got Hieroglyphics. Is it fit for me? Cause I was into that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It just fit. Like you was into blow blow that type of shit, like chewing on some wood that type of nigga. Not, not, not that far into it, but I grew up knowing who I was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had books and stuff. My parents were educated like that. So I just knew about myself growing up. So that just kind of fit, you know? Speaking of hieroglyphics, uh, you know you got, like, one of the most iconic logos in all of music. How did the Hyro logo come to be? I, I made it, basically. How? I, okay, my I, I, I'm a visual artist, first of all. First and foremost, my father was a abstract artist. Like in the eighties, he had like art shows and shit like this. You know what I'm saying? So that's first and foremost for me. Um, I was into graphic design too, so I wanted something that was like a the, like the uh, the happy face logo. You know what I mean? I want something like that, that basic. But that I, was your thought. You wanted <laughs> simplicity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I was into graphic design, so I was like, I wanted something that was simple that could be recognized that instantly like a mcdonald's golden arches like something like that you know what i mean that's how i was looking at it so i just scribbled the idea on a like napkin took it up to Electra, and shout out to Electra because you know they they really helped me as far as yeah you know what i'm saying I, I i was i was cool with everybody up there so i went to the art department gave my idea and then they they made it the real way you know what i'm saying that's sick as fuck man Thing else, it started out with an idea. I just scribbled the idea on a piece of paper so so I wouldn't forget it. You know what I'm saying? So for anybody out there watching, you know what I mean? Like, if you got ideas, try to get them down, man. Damn. That's what separates the millionaires from people who ain't. They write their shit down. You know what I'm saying? Get that shit down. Speaking of hieroglyphics, how do, uh, how do everybody, like, not 
Now, I'm not going to ask you how every individual member got part of it, but did y'all have trials? Did y'all have to battle? Did y'all get jumped in? How did people get in? That's, that's funny. Um, nah, I mean, it, you know what? It was kind of organic. I, I was always friends with A-plus, you know what I'm saying? Tajay was friends with A-plus before I knew him. So I became friends with Tajay through Plus, and it, that was like the, 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 the Triforce right there. So that that basically was hieroglyphics. We didn't call it that back then, but we was the ones that was together. Did you have any other kind of weird name? Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think plus. I think was what was plus name? That was called the African Brothers. Nah, nah, nah. But nah, actually, it was some Oakland shit. Taj, was like Solid T. Uh oh, uh oh. But he a brainiac, so he, he couldn't just be hard T. He had to be Solid T. You feel me? What was A-plus first rap day? Man, I don't even remember. Like, What was your first rap day? TDK plus 30 or something like that. Damn. Like, like um, implying that I had 30 people that behind me or something. Which was probably half true, but now. Uh, as Hyro or going on by yourself, did, uh, you ever come across niggas trying to battle y'all? You know what? It wasn't a lot of people out in the Bay that was like into hip hop like we was. Like it was kind of like they they were stuck on some something else out in Oakland. Like it, it wasn't progressive like that. So we was pretty much outsiders. There was a few people around the Bay that did what we did, and then we would meet up with them in battle. That's how I met Casual actually. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good find right there. Plus, and uh, Tajay basically wanted me to go eat him up and shut him up, I guess. How did that battle go? Uh -oh. What Cash told me, because I don't really remember, but he said, and I know this must be true because this was true. He said, I came down to his block, ate deuce, uh -oh. and I, I came over there walking a Dalmatian. I used to walk my neighbor's Dalmatian from bread or whatever. So I came down there with the mud or whatever. Had He said, I had on a koofy. <laughs> which I know was true. He said, I had a koofy on, came down there. I think I might have had the, um, the, 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 the Nubian stick with me. Uh -oh. And he said, I came down there and I said, ha, 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 who wants to battle the master? <laughs> which probably said some crazy shit like that back then because I, I was known for saying crazy shit like that. Wait, well, how did the battle go, though? Oh, I mean, I ended up liking him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how I am. I'm not like... I'm cool, you know what I'm saying? So once we battled, I was like, damn, you dope, man. And then we got cool, which I don't think was intended for A-plus and Tajay, but we just got cool after that. And I started, I started hanging out with Cash, like, a lot after that. Yeah. So that means he must have showed you something that day. Yeah, I mean, not only that, I just liked him, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I liked him, period, you know what I'm saying? We just really just clicked. <laughs> What's up, dude? Well, I got one more question to ask you. Question is, what's next on the platter for um for Dale? Man, I'm just you know what I could do a lot of stuff musically. You know what I mean? Like I'm pretty accomplished. I feel like as a musician, so I want to get more of that out there. Just to let people know I could do that. Um, really, what's coming out like project wise is solid. I just did this project with Amp Live called uh, Gate Gate Thirteen, right? So. We working on that now, you know what I mean? I, I like working with Amp Live a lot, too, musically and, you know, rap-wise. So we thinking about doing instrumental stuff, too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. we just kind of, like, see kind of the same way as far as, like, production and stuff is concerned. And we click. So we just trying to give people something extra that's more than what they used to from, uh, you know, from artists like us. And, you know, I'm... I'm 45 now, you know what I'm saying? So at this point, I feel like, you know, people expect more out of me, you know what I'm saying? So I want to show that growth, but at the same time, still keep it something that's roots, you know, just, you know, funky, you know? That's why they call you the funky almost happy. And I lied. That ain't the last time, nigga. You like battle rap, nigga? What? Oh, yeah. Who's the greatest battle rapper of all time? Of all time, man. I can go right now. The GOAT right now, I would have to say it's between Tay Rock and Hollow the Don, I would say. Really. But I love, I love Team 3.0, Hollow the Don. I would love, yeah, shout out to Hollow, man. Ever since grind time, man. But um, I like the, the battle that they had, 
I really enjoyed, like, fully. Like, I thought that that, like, really showed people, like, this is this is what can be done. You know, you know what I mean? They How really. How many times you watch that? I almost know the shit by heart. I almost, I almost know the whole battle by heart at this point. You know how, like, you get a tape and you like it and you be bumping it? That's what I bump when I'm rolling around is that battle. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's where I come from, though. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to get on stage and try to battle fools. That's that's what they do. But I, I know what that is. So, of course, I'm into this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm... Go- that's what I'm. I'm looking for that type of aggression, that type of you know force that I don't see. Getting across what you say, what, like how you said, when Tay say something, you get what he mean, you get what he say. Yeah, exactly, man. And the crowd too. You know what I'm saying? I miss that type of crowd. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that kind of rowdiness, kind of off the hook. I, I'm, I like that. You know what I mean? You can't really get that in commercial world over there. Yeah, man. Y'all didn't know that about Dale. Well, thanks for being on Blue, bro. And thanks for being such a cool nigga on the road, too. Yeah! Boop!